Hello everyone, I am Elythus and welcome back again for another video. It has been a little bit since I last posted. Uh, I think the last videos I posted were the Iridori Sakura Dojinshi reviews. If you'd like to check those out, uh, there will be links to those in the description. But as for this video, it is my manga haul for the summer of 2020. I know it's been a while, they haven't really been monthly, but uh, basically this is what I picked up for the summer of 2020 given the global circumstances. But uh, yeah, without any more hullabaloo, let's get into the video. Alright, to start off with, if you've known my channel for any amount of time, you know I must start off with a Yuri to come back, and that is a Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow, Volume 3, about two girls in the Aquarium Club at their high school where they kind of, you know, take care of aquariums and all that, but it's Yuri, so it's better than that would otherwise be. But uh, yeah, this is volume three. I read volume one, kind of building up a bit of a backlog before I continue, but this one seems to be more of a slice of life style story as opposed to going, you know, extremely deep into the romance sort of right off the bat. But uh, yeah, I am anticipating what this series is going to be in the future. But uh, yeah, A Tropical Fish, Yearns for Snow, Volume 3. Next up, I have Seraph of the End, Volume 19. This is a very pretty simple sort of action-y shonen vampire series. Uh, it has vampires in it. Normally, I'm not a big fan of shonen action series. There are a few. This is one of them. I imagine the vampires might have to do a little bit with that. But um, uh, yeah, it's a fun action shonen series. From what I can gather, I think it's kind of nearing its conclusion. There are only... Um, it's still ongoing in Japan, I believe, but uh, we're fairly caught up here in English. There may be 20 volumes out total in Japan, but uh, yeah, a fun action shonen with uh, vampires in it. Surf of the End, Volume 19. Next up, I have World Trigger, Volume 20. I know I just talked about not liking too many battle action kind of shonen, but this is one of the few I do. It's kind of set in a sci-fi setting. Uh, where these aliens are kind of invading the Earth, and they've got to use sort of magic, sci-fi, space magic to fight off the aliens. And it's kind of unique because it's more focused on team dynamics as opposed to just kind of individuals duking it out. There's a lot more tactics involved, so that was at least a little bit more interesting to me than just sort of like we fight the bad guys with our strongest fighter in via the power of friendship we win. Well, I no doubt imagine that power of friendship will be in there somewhere. Uh, I have been enjoying more of the tactics sort of team-based combat in this series, but that is World Trigger of Volume 20. Next up I have How Do We Relationship Volume 1. Uh, big cheers for college girl Yuri. Woo! Yay! It's not just high school girls, which um, has been getting a little tiring as of, uh, as of late because that's been predominantly what we've been getting. But a lot of publishers are putting out either working women or college-age women. This is a college women story, so really happy for that. It's, uh, I feel there's a little bit more liberty that authors can take when uh, they make the characters adults as opposed to sort of children. So it's always a nice sort of change of pace to see an adult story featuring a girl-girl relationship. This one is a little steamier than uh, Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow, but uh, I did enjoy it, uh, or at least this first volume I found it uh, quite comical, and it didn't, it wasn't just comedy, um, although their first meeting is a little funny. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're looking for a non-high school girls Yuri, then I would recommend picking up How Do We Relationship. I feel it is a very well done story so far, and I cannot wait for more volumes. But that is volume one of How Do We Relationship. Next up, I have the first two volumes of Takane and Hana. And uh, I've read the first volume. I have not read the second volume. Um, I'm going to give this one the two volume treatment. Um, the first volume was kind of okay. If I don't really like it much more in the second volume, I'm probably going to drop the series. But in short, this series is about a girl and her sister is supposed to have a sort of arranged marriage meeting with this guy. And she doesn't want to go, so she gets her younger sister to go in her stead. And from there, just random things happen. So they kind of get along with each other, though there's a large age discrepancy um, but it doesn't really start off as, like, any romantic thing. It's more just like, hey, this is someone I can hang out with. 
because everything else kind of sucks right now. But uh, yeah, Takane and Hana Volumes 1 and 2. Um, wasn't a big fan of Volume 1. I'm going to see if it picks up in Volume 2, and if it doesn't, I will probably drop it. But uh, yeah, it's, um, I think, like a few volumes, I think into the, the teens or the 20s. I can't remember if it's complete or not. I think it is, but uh, yeah, Takane and Hana Volumes 1 and 2. Next up, I have Dead Dead Demons, da 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 Destruction, um, Volume 8. Um, this is an Inio Asano work. I'm a big fan of Inio Asano's other works, so I'm just waiting for the series to complete, and then I will binge read the whole thing. I'm fairly confident I will enjoy this series. I've heard nothing but great things, but uh, yeah, can't really say much about it, seeing as I haven't read it. Um, I've just read Asano's other works and really enjoyed them, so uh, yeah anticipating enjoying this one as well, but that is Dead Dead Demons D -d 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 Destruction Volume 8. Next up, I have Muji Rushi by Naoki Urasawa, which is just a single volume series by Naoki Urasawa. He's the same creator as Monster right here, which is one of my more favorite manga works like out there, so I'm highly anticipating enjoying this single volume. I uh, haven't cracked it open, just yet. I got it pretty recently, but I am highly anticipating enjoying this one because, as I've said, I liked Naoki Urasawa's other work that I've read. He has multiple. I've only read Monster, probably going to pick up 20th Century Boys at some point, but I absolutely loved Monster, so I have faith that I will enjoy this single volume as well. But that is Muji Rushi. Next up, I have Ran in the Grey World, Volume 7. I've read Volume 1, now with this final volume, I can finish the whole series out. It has that whimsical vibe similar to the Ancient Magus Bride from what I have read so far, but again, I've only read that first volume. But uh, yeah, cannot wait to read more into this story. Um, there is one odd relationship between our main character who's very young, she's a little girl, and when she puts on these magic shoes, it makes her look much older. And so she has an interaction with a, more of like a playboy character. He doesn't really know that she's super young, but you as the reader do know. So do keep that in mind if that is something that might bother you. Uh, now you know. But uh, yeah, Ran in the Grey World, Volume 7. Cannot wait to finish this one off. Next up, I have the 16th and final volume for Tokyo Ghoul Re. Now, I enjoyed the first season of Tokyo Ghoul, so I imagine I will enjoy Tokyo Ghoul Re. I was waiting for this 16th volume to come out before I binge read the whole series, but now that this one is out and a big volume at that, as I'm sure you can see, um, I'm ready to read Tokyo Ghoul Re. I will, you know, probably at some point, maybe on Twitter, uh, let you guys know what my thoughts are of this sequel series, how it compares to the original, and sort of my general thoughts and opinions in that regard. But uh, I am anticipating enjoying this series because I enjoyed the prequel series. But uh, yeah, Tokyo Ghoul Re, Volume 16. Next up, I have Full Metal Alchemist, the Full Metal Edition, Volume 9. Halfway through these Full Metal Editions, which are quite nice. And I have seen the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood anime, but this will be the first time that I am reading the Full Metal Alchemist manga. I have a hard time believing I won't enjoy it. Uh, I imagine I will enjoy this series very much, but for now I've just been collecting these Full Metal editions, waiting for it all to be out so I can binge read the whole series, because it has been quite some time since I watched the anime. But uh, yeah, these Full Metal editions are very nice. They're not too much more expensive than just buying two singles. Um, it's a little bit, um, they're the price of two singles, and it has a little bit less content than two singles. It's about one and a half singles, I would say, is about how much is in here. So they're not too much more expensive, but do keep that in mind that the Full Metal Editions are very nice, and they are slightly more expensive than just buying the singles, but, uh, yeah, highly anticipating enjoying the manga, the original, the source material, um, but, uh, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Edition, Volume 9. Alright, next up I have Tomo-chan is a Girl, Volume 7. Only one more of these volumes to go. This is a funny, four-coma, sort of romantic comedy series about our main character Tomo-chan and the guy that she is in love with. 
and how she doesn't think that he sees her as a girl, and so she's trying to kind of act more girly, I guess, but um, it's basically just her personality conflicting with, like, ideas of femininity or whatever, and the guy that she likes, um, his sort of reactions to everything. But uh, yeah, it's a fun four a comedy series with some very fun and interesting characters, and it's only eight volumes long, so decently short as well, kind of a mid-length to shorter type of series. But uh, can't wait for that final volume. I want to see how this series ends. But uh, yeah, that is Tomo-chan is a Girl, Volume 7. Next up, I have Volume 3 of Gal Gohan, which is about a girl who wants to learn how to cook. And so she goes to the school's cooking club, and it's about uh, her and the teacher of the cooking club, who just is kind of trying to be more friendly with the students because he feels they always just kind of avoid him. But uh, yeah, it's basically those two kind of getting along, and our gal uh, kind of develops a crush for the teacher, so be wary of that. Um, he's kind of oblivious to everything that's going on. He's just kind of happy that people are in the cooking club and kind of interacting with him, and he gets to kind of teach them how to cook. So he he's real happy about that, but uh, yeah, he's oblivious to, to everything else that's going on. But uh, yeah, that is Ga Gal Gohan Volume 3. Um, I've been reading this one volume to volume. Um, so far, I've wanted to pick up the next volume, but that could obviously change. But so far, I have been enjoying this series. Next up is the third and final volume of Our Wonderful Days, which is more of a slice-of-life Yuri series. Um, this one seems like more of an innocent bend to it. Uh, I've read the first volume. It's only three volumes long, so I've just kind of been waiting for volumes two and three to come out before I finish it. Uh, I will probably, you know, maybe give my thoughts on it later or something like that, but uh, yeah, it's very short. We'll see how it goes. I do like my Yuri, uh, though when it's super kind of just not really Yuri, where the girls just kind of interact and it's just Yuri subtext. Not super big fan of that. I like to see more of the romantic aspect of things, but uh, yeah, Our Wonderful Days, Volume 3. Next up is Goodbye My Rose Garden, Volume 2. Only one more to go before this series is complete. Another Yuri series, though this one focuses more on a romantic aspect between this sort of heiress, authoress, uh, and a girl that becomes kind of her maid, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, it's set in England, uh, I think during sort of the Victorian age. But I've really been enjoying this one. And if you are a Yuri fan, I would recommend checking it out. And at only three volumes long, it is rather short. But uh, yeah, I have been really enjoying Goodbye, My Rose Garden. Next up, I have Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs, Volume 9. Uh, I've been reading this one volume to volume recently, just kind of, if I enjoy it, I buy the next one. This isn't something I typically do, but this series is more episodic in nature, so it's uh, not as big of a problem for me. I generally tend to like the binge read, if you uh, could not tell, but uh, yeah, this is very similar to like a Two Love Rue or a Love Hina or something like that, where you have the main character guy and sort of the harem that sort of follows him around, or well, he kind of goes to the hot spring where they all are and wacky shenanigans happens uh, from that point on, but uh, so far it has kept my attention, but as I've said, I've been reading it volume to volume just to kind of see how each volume changes as the story goes on, but that is Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs Volume 9. Next up, I have a Blank Canvas, My So-Called Artist Journey Volume 5, the final volume of this series. Have not quite read this one yet, I've read 1 through 4, have enjoyed it um, from, er, I've enjoyed it thus far. We'll see how it concludes. This is basically just Akiko Higashimura's autobiography about sort of becoming a manga artist. Uh, if you do not know who she is, she did uh, Tokyo Tarareba Girls and Princess Jellyfish, if I remember correctly, and a whole bunch of other series. But those are the ones I know are definitely published in English. But uh, yeah, it's been kind of interesting reading her story about sort of becoming a manga artist and the experiences that she had. So. Interested to see how the story concludes, but uh, yeah, that is Blank Canvas, my so-called artist journey, volume 5. Next up, I have volume 3 for Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out, and once again, the cover does have the sort of, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, which is comical, I, or at least I find it to be comical, but um, yeah, this is basically a series about Uzaki-chan and her senpai, 
and she basically just is a thorn in his side the whole time. She kind of just trolls him, um, teases him, and that kind of thing. And it's about these two characters' interactions sort of being like, hey, are they? Are they? Will they? Won't they? Because all the other characters are kind of like, oh, they'd be a perfect couple, whereas these two are just kind of like, don't care as much, or at least... Uh, our main male character doesn't care as much, he doesn't really think about that too often. I think Uzaki-chan maybe cares a little bit more, but again, they just kind of hang out in butt heads, and that is where the comedy comes from. But uh, yeah, that is Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out of Volume 3. Next up I have Love on the Other Side by Nagabe, which is a short story collection, as it says there on the cover. But uh, yeah, this is just... As it says, a short story collection about people interacting with these sort of more monstrous creatures. Um, if you're familiar with Nag Nagabe's other work, uh, you may find this, you know, more familiar to you. But as my first Nagabe work, uh, I did enjoy this series. I felt some of the stories were better than others, as is typical for short story collections. But uh, yeah, if you're looking for more of a sort of, I guess, contemplative work, this might be one to check out. It is kind of thick, as you can probably tell. Um, it is in the larger trim size, which I do like to see from Seven Seas. But uh, yeah, it is a decent short story collection if you like sort of short story collections as opposed to just a single volume with one continuous plot, then uh, this might be one to check out. Uh, I did enjoy it, but as is typical, some of the stories are better than others, so do be aware of that. Next up, I have Flying Witch, Volume 8. This series continues to be a lot of fun. It's just really calming and re relaxing. You watch our witch just kind of travel around, either learn about mortal stuff like, you know, farming and going to the store, going to school, cooking food, or doing witchy stuff, which is usually not super powerful shooting fireballs all over the place, but sort of just like, hey, you can steal someone's shadow and move it around the place and it freaks the cat out when you do it to the cat. And so it's really fun, sort of a calming, not super adrenaline pumping work that you can just read to relax to. So I really enjoy this series. Can't wait for volume nine. And if you're just looking for a fun slice of life, calm, relaxing series, I would recommend checking out Flying Witch of volume eight. Next up is My Boy, Volume 6. I've read Volume 1, I enjoyed it, so uh, going to see where it goes from there. But uh, of what I've read, I did enjoy it. But it's about this, like, I think around 30-year-old office lady, and she's not gotten married or anything like that, and she finds this boy, and she kind of takes him under her wing because his family situation isn't that great. So she's kind of taking care of him, kind of in a motherly role, or at least from what I've read so far. I don't know if that changes anywhere along the road. We shall see. As I've said, I've only read volume one so far, but uh, yeah, that is my boy of volume six. Next up, I have Tales of Berseria, volume three, the final volume for the manga adaptation of the Tales of Berseria game. Um, I did enjoy the game. I'm just kind of reading the manga to see how things were adapted. Uh, I would recommend playing the game, uh, Instead of reading the manga, unless you hate playing games, uh, there are people like that. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm just going to see sort of how the manga or the game was adapted into manga formats. Uh, as for people that are unfamiliar with the game, uh, you probably won't get as much enjoyment out of this series as those who have. But uh, yeah, that is Tales of Berseria of Volume 3. Next up, I have the Sailor Moon Eternal Edition Volume 8. And uh, almost done with these Eternal Editions. I have been reading them volume to volume. So uh, I've read a lot of Sailor Moon so far, volumes 1 through 7. I would not read it previously. And so reading it in sort of the late 2010s and now in 2020, I can say the series has definitely aged. Um, doesn't have the nostalgia factor for me as it does for some other people, because I never really watched the show when I was young. But uh, yeah, reading the manga as a first timer, sort of understanding uh, why it was so big and like just reading it to get an understanding of one of the more influential works when it comes to manga. Uh, as I've said, I can say it has aged. Um, that's definitely true, but we're all almost done with these Eternal editions, only two more to go, and this is volume eight. I've read one through seven, so 
about to give this one a go. But uh, yeah, that is Sailor Moon, the eighth volume of the Eternal Editions. Next up, I have the first volume of Breasts Are My Favorite Thing in the World, which is a short four coma series about this one sort of sporty girl and her fascination with breasts, and she loves them. And she's sad that she does not really have breasts, but her one friend definitely has breasts, as you can probably tell from the cover. So, uh, yeah, it's about their escapades together and sort of all the weird, quirky nonsense that happens between the two, so it is kind of funny. Um, if you're into four com coma comedy series, with a, this one has a little bit of a, a Yuri bend to it, so if you're into Yuri like I am, and you're looking for a sort of short four coma comedy, this might be one to check out, though the volumes are quite short, but uh, yeah, the characters are fun and entertaining, though they are a little one note as of now, but so far the series has been pretty funny, at least in my opinion. But that is the first volume of Breaths Are My Favorite Things in the World. Next up I have Divine Raiment Magical Girl Howling Moon, which is a... Uh, Magical Girl series. Oh, this is volume two. Um, I don't think I said that, but this is just a fun action dumb uh, Magical Girl series uh, There isn't a whole lot About this aside from the same guy that does the art for this did the art for high school of the dead So I do really like the art style But yeah, this is wacky comedy Action type stuff. So if you're not looking for something weird and dumb and crazy then this might not be the series for you but yeah, it's action, it's comedy, it's dumb, it's stupid, and that's that's basically what it is. But uh, yeah, Divine Raiment, Magical Girl, Howling Moon, Volume 2. Next up, I have the third volume of Kaiju Girl Caramelize, which is a series about this girl who, when she kind of, you know, her emotions run wild, she turns into a giant Godzilla monster, a giant kaiju, and it's funny because the boy that she likes... Uh, she can't ever be near him, because if she gets near him, she turns into a giant monster. Um, and it's basically just sort of a uh, comedy series revolving around her, this problem that she has, and the boy that she likes. Um, if you're fam familiar with Spika Aoki's style, you will, you know, recognize it immediately, as I'm sure, because her art style is very distinctive. Uh, if you're looking for a romantic comedy, this is absolutely fantastic. I really can't recommend it enough. Um, only three volumes out so far, but it is it is super fun and enjoyable to read. But uh, yeah, that is Kaiju Girl Caramelize. Next up, I have volume three for Monster Wrestling Interspecies Combat Girls. If this volume is kind of underwhelming at this point, I'm just going to drop the series. It's just kind of an interesting, weird series that I hadn't really seen before. So I've been giving it a few volumes. Um, the first two volume, or the first volume I enjoyed, the second volume was kind of eh. So this third volume is, is like the real test of whether I continue it or not. But basically, it's about monster girls that fight like WWE style. So yeah, it's uh, if that sounds like something you'd be into, it's probably exactly what you think it is. Um, but uh, yeah, I was more interested in sort of seeing the characters develop, but it seems to be more focused on the action aspect, which, eh, for me, I don't care as much, but, uh, yeah. This is, a uh, Volume 3 for Monster Wrestling Interspecies Combat Girls. Next up is Volume 7 for the case study of Vanitas, which is a story about vampires, which, as you've heard me say before, vampires are kinda cool. I like seeing authors' different takes on the vampire mythos, but, uh, yeah, this is by Jun Mochizuki, who also wrote Pandora Hearts, which is a series that I did enjoy. Uh, I do have the box set for that series. As of now, I've only read the first three volumes, probably going to read some more very soon, because I have, you know, a few volumes of backlog at this point. But uh, yeah, that is volume seven for the case study of Vanitas. And this volume is uh, rather large, as you can see. Next up, I have not one, but two Yuri anthologies, both Eclair anthologies Blanche and Blau, or at least that's how I think they're pronounced. I don't know. They're spelled very strangely, but uh, yeah, these are Yuri anthologies. 
And as you can expect from Yuri anthologies, it's a bunch of stories about girls and girls. Girls in love with girls. Uh, they range widely in subject matter, so it's kind of hard to say, but these are really for Yuri fans that want to see different creators' takes on different Yuri series. As for would I recommend these, this would be an absolute yes. Uh, they're fun Yuri series, you get to see a bunch of different creators and the wacky ideas that they come up with, as I've said about other sort of short story collections or anthologies. Some of the stories are much better than others, and some of them are not that great, but uh, yeah. Some of them you will probably enjoy a lot, and uh, there's probably enough in here for everyone, but uh, yeah. Both Eclair Blanchet and Eclair Blau, uh, don't know how to pronounce them, as I've said, but uh, yeah. We're going to be getting more of these Eclair anthologies, and I'm really happy about that, but uh, yeah. Two more since the first one, really happy, but uh, yeah, really excited. I like Yuri, if you could not tell. Speaking of me liking Yuri, I have... Always Human by Ari North, which is a webcomic that has been adapted to print. Um, you can find the series on, I think, uh, Webtoons, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the print edition of the webcomic. There's a soft cover, and then there's the hardcover. Of course, I had to get the hardcover because, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this, I don't think it covers the entirety of the webcomic, but uh, yeah, as you can see from the art there, it's a little hard to open it up because it is a, a hard cover instead of just sort of bending the cover backwards, I have to actually hold the book. But uh, yeah, this was a good sort of webcomic to print adaptation. I enjoyed the work and I'm happy to see that we are getting sort of physical prints of webcomics. Now, we just need uh, Mage and Demon Queen to get a, a print edition. That would make me very, very happy. That is one of my more favorite uh, Yuri webcomics. But if you're looking to give um, sort of an, an independent creator sort of a shot, I would recommend reading Always Human. It has a, it does a very good job of sort of dealing with uh, relationships in this sort of sci-fi futuristic setting. So uh, yeah, would recommend giving Always Human a go if you want to support sort of webcomic creators and all of that jazz. But uh, yeah, this is a well done hardcover edition for that work. Next up I have Animata Volume 4, which is about a girl trying to make it in the animation industry. I read volumes 1 through 3. Uh, I've been enjoying the story so far. The first few volumes are really good. It's uh, maybe not really good, but they give a good idea as to sort of the process behind making an anime, which I thought was cool. And uh, this fourth volume, which I haven't read, but it does have an interview with, uh, I believe, one of the uh, some... I can't remember who in the sort of hierarchy when it comes to making anime, whether they be sort of a, a checker, uh, director, uh, in-betweener. I can't remember exactly who it was an interview with, but uh, there is an interview with someone in the anime industry in this one. But uh, yeah, I've been enjoying this one for a while now. Uh, if you're looking for a new series that is kind of dealing with how anime is made, this one might be a good one to go with. Been enjoying it so far. I think we're caught up to Japan, either that or they just released like volume 5, but uh, pretty soon the releases are going to slow down, but yeah, volumes 1 through 4 of Animata, 1 through 3 have been great, I am anticipating volume 4 to be no different, but uh, yeah, Animata of volume 4. Next up I have Marginal Operation volume 3, which is about some Japanese dude that gets not really conscripted, but he signs up for basically this mercenary band where he kind of is like, hey, uh, doing logistics and stuff, and command and stuff. It's uh, kind of kind of crazy. There's, like, you know, weird stuff that happens in the series. Um, parts of it I like, parts of it I don't. I've been reading it volume to volume. We'll see how each individual volume goes. Uh, I enjoyed volume 2 more than volume 1, but, uh, yeah, with volume 3, I've not yet read it. We shall see... Um, if I continue to pick the series up uh, henceforth, but uh, yeah, volumes one and two were good. Waiting to read volume three, probably read it pretty soon, but uh, yeah. Marginal Operation, volume three. Next up, I have volume two of Pleasure and Corruption, put out by Denpa Books. Uh, if you've read Flowers of Evil, you are gonna know the story beats of this story. It is very similar to that. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's really hard to say anything other than if you've read Flowers of Evil, you kind of know what this series is, is like. Uh, if you've heard someone else describe Flowers of Evil, 
yeah, this is this is gonna be like basically what they described. Um, it's I believe six volumes long. I've been enjoying it so far. I enjoyed Flowers of Evil, so you know that kind of goes hand in hand basically. Uh, I feel like this is a good panel to explain what exactly this series is about. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what this series is about. But uh, yeah, um, Pleasure and Corruption Volume Two by Dempa. Next up, I have When Budding Lilies Blossom by Sio. This is a Faku Books release. It is their first uh, Yuri work, so I was very happy to pick this one up. It has a bunch of different Yuri stories that are explicit in nature, so I cannot open the volume up. But uh, yeah, it's fun if you're a Yuri fan and you want things that are very steamy and explicit. So if you're if you're looking for that, would recommend picking up When Buddies. Budding Lilies Blossom, but, uh, yeah, can't really open it up, can't really say much more, but, uh, yeah, it's very steamy, it's explicit, and if you're into Yuri, highly recommend checking this one out, but that is When Budding Lilies Blossom, put out by Faku Books. Next up, I have the first Soul Eater Perfect Edition. Uh, I've not read Soul Eater yet, I've seen the anime for the series, um, Probably read the first one or two for Perfect Editions to see if I want to just continue on with the series. Um, as I've said before, I'm not usually into sort of shonen action manga. I usually tend to prefer the anime if I do choose to consume it at all. But since, you know, Square Enix is a new publisher, I thought why not at least give it a go. But uh, yeah, the Soul Eater Perfect Edition Volume 1. Not read it yet, almost dropped the volume. Um, but uh, yeah, we will see how it goes. Um, not anticipating super loving it or hating it, but I did enjoy the anime, so we will see what the manga or the source material is like. And last up for this haul, I have the most anticipated second volume for The Rose of Versailles. It has been a long time coming. We got the first volume this year, we never thought that would happen. Um, and now we've gotten the second volume, and so I'm really happy about that. I think the third volume's also coming out very soon, but um... Yeah, well, Rose of Versailles Volume 2, I absolutely loved the first volume of this series, and so I cannot wait to read the second volume. And this series really goes to show that just because a series was written a long time ago, that doesn't mean it's not still good now. Rose of Versailles is still fantastic, and uh, cannot wait to see more. Really happy that Udon has decided to actually put this series out, um, and the volumes themselves are very, very high quality, so... Yeah, they're very nice volumes, really happy to see them, cannot wait for more, and uh, cannot wait to jump into this second volume, because uh, the first volume was uh, fantastic, but uh, yeah, definitely pick up Rose of Versailles. They are quite expensive, but uh, in my opinion, they are very much worth it, but uh, yeah, Rose of Versailles, book two of five. And this month I also picked up sort of two digital doujin works. Oh, one is The Mermaid's Garden from Lilica, and the other is I Want You to Only Want My Body from Iridori Sakura, both of which are Yuri works because I'm a Yuri fan, so if it's a Yuri doujin, uh, the odds of me picking it up go up uh, quite significantly. But uh, yeah, just wanted to let you guys know that I am making digital purchases of those doujin works every now and then. If you would like to hear me talk about those sort of more in these halls in the future, do let me know as well as I could include sort of what I'm reading webcomics wise as well. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to hear about those. Um, I'd be more than happy to include them. And that will do it for this summer manga haul for the month, year, season of summer 2020. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, as always, make sure to like and share. And if you'd like to keep up to date with all of my content, you can subscribe to my channel and ring that notifications bell or follow me on Twitter. There's a link to that in the description down below. Uh, let me know your thoughts down there in the comments about all the series that, that I hauled this month. What have been your favorite pickups uh, over this summer season during, you know, quarantine that we've been experiencing and leave other sort of just whatever you have to leave it down there random comments or whatever leave those in the comment section down below i really like reading those long thought out ones happy to be back with this manga haul for the summer of 2020 and hopefully 
I should have my collection video out um, uh, pretty soon, I would like, um, if I can get it recorded, but uh, yeah. Not a promise I'm going to make just yet, but uh, just, you know, teasing, that might be coming pretty soon, but uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this manga haul for the season of summer 2020. Uh, I am Malathus. Goodbye.